Hello everyone, welcome back to another Dragon Ball Z video, and this one we're going to go ahead and talk about Dokkan Battle, of course, and we're going to talk about the top transformations in Dokkan Battle. It's a lot of fun when we go ahead and talk about the transformation mechanic and the way it has impacted the game recently and things of that nature, so we're going to go ahead and talk about that, and I hope you guys enjoy. Of course, if you are new, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content here and all that other good stuff. So... This is a post by Mobile Man ASC. You guys may know him from the Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle Reddit. And uh, he went ahead and produced a whole little list of the transformation mechanic and the way that it impacts the units that impacts, excuse me, the units that it is applied to. So let's go ahead and break it down. Uh, Lollygam's idea uh, to make analysis posts more visually appealing has inspired me to change up the format of my top 10 hardest hitters list. Uh, so you guys may know, I've done it before, I know Truth does sometimes. I don't really do it that much because it's kind of hard to keep up with uh, as far as videos go because I don't want to be posting a new video like every week saying, oh, new hardest hitter and stuff like that. But Mobile Man is the one that does those lists where he breaks down the way that the units impact their teams based on the average attack that they generate. <clears throat> so that's something that's a different perspective and I really enjoy it. And it's a very, very good read from him. I decided that to launch this fun new format, I'd begin by making a somewhat different kind of list than I normally do. In this list, I'm going to show the average attack of the top transformations in the game. Uh, so he's doing the same thing here. Average attack of the top transformations in the game is what he's uh, basically touting this as. That means I won't be looking at the overall average attack of the transformation units. Instead, I'm looking only at how the unit performs after transforming. So... That's actually very important when we talk about the first unit here because the first unit, Tarlis, uh, whenever we look at him, he changes drastically. Like, he changes from being a support unit and probably the best support unit in the game, if not one of the very few top, you know, 1% of support units in this game, uh, to being more of a damage dealer. And, and that's what he's saying here. I'm not going to focus on what the unit would do, you know, how randomly they'll change and the way that their pre- and post-transformations get averaged out attack-wise. So that's what he's talking about here. So, as usual, all units will be calculated at the free dupe level, meaning, again, no dupe investment. So, these units could change as they get critical hits, if they don't have a natural critical hit, being an STR type, things of that nature. So, keep that in mind. Lastly, I'd like to thank you slash my FGC. She gave me the post transformation assets that I used for the post. Shout out to my. Anyways, number five. Turles, explosive evolution. I really like this new uh, new layout, <laughs> Mobile Man, if you're watching this. Uh, so the links that he's considering to be active over on the left-hand side, Super Fierce Battle, active 100% of the time, the Fierce Battle link, because the whole team, basically, that he'd be on pretty much has that. Uh, if you didn't know Turles, he is the category leader for the Movie Bosses category, and again, basically that whole team has Fierce Battle. Uh, COA, totally sleeping on what that is right now. In fact, let me go ahead and pull it up right now. Uh, Wiki, Turles, Dokkan. That was totally backwards, I know, but your boy, I need to know what that is. Like, it's going to drive me insane because I didn't even consider it. What is COA? What, uh, Thirst for Conquest? No, that's not that. Your boy ain't even, I don't know, whatever, don't care. <laughs> COA, I don't know what that is, but don't care. It probably is Thirst for Conquest. Probably some Japanese, uh, probably the Japanese terminology. I'd have to go to dbz.space. Nonetheless, um, that's what he has. Saiyan Warrior Race, 50% uptime. Eh, Big Bad Boss is 40% uptime. Now, that one's actually pretty interesting because you are able to proc that a little bit more if your team's a bit crappier and you can't tank as much. But on the optimal team for this guy, you'd be running a lot of tanks. The team's very, very good defensively. So it's one of the reasons as to why it wouldn't be active a lot of the time. So just under 50% of the time. Strangely, Turles becomes much weaker after transforming. Before he transforms, he's the best support unit in the game. After transforming, he becomes a mediocre hard hitter. So for anybody that doesn't understand, Turles does not naturally become weaker, right? He starts actually outputting damage on his own. That's what Turles is able to do. He goes from literally only giving himself 40% attack to giving him however much he gives himself post-transformation, uh, what is it, 130, right? So he's able to get a very, very good individual attack increase, but the way that this is calculated is the overall change on the unit. And the reason he's saying he's weaker is because that 40% that he would have been giving to the entire rotation 
made the overall team better than just having Turles there, not giving that support, but being able to hit harder himself. And that is something that speaks to the value of support units in this game. And you guys wonder, some people still at this point don't understand why, you know, I'd run a support unit or things of that nature. Uh, and whether you new new player or, you know, just being hard at it, I guess, I don't know. Uh, it, it's undeniable how valuable support units are in this game. Now, if you don't want to run them, that's totally your discretion. But Let's not undervalue them, right? Turles is an amazing support unit, 40%, uh, three key. <clears throat> He's just tremendously good. And also the key helps also. Uh, I'm assuming that he factors in the key change because if you have a team of LRs, that could be, you know, something that impacts how often an LR can get their 18 key super. So especially on a double Turles team, you know. So that's how it works out. Uh, to all the children reading this post, let Turles' post transformation weakness be a leaning or learning, excuse me, opportunity. Never eat your fruits or vegetables. Yes, never eat those things. They're gross. I'm just playing. Uh, anyways, 1.3 average attack. Number four, I kind of spoiled a little bit. I'm going to try to be better about that. My bad. Number four is Mastered UI Goku. Super dimensional instinct. I like that name too. Uh, so, of course, the Awakened form for him, 100% uptime on uh, Super Fierce Battle. Godly Power, actually only active 16.5% of the time. Uh, and then Kamehameha is active 67% of the time. So, to get a better understanding of this, the only way I'd say he can improve this is to show which units he'd be considering them with. But I can tell you right now, the units that they are being considered with would be considered as their best, most optimal teams. So... Since Godly Power isn't active that much, I'm assuming he's... Well, I don't know what team he's actually throwing this guy on. He would have to be on the Godly Power team, just naturally, because that's like the best team he can be on. Uh, or the, the Realm of Gods, or whatever it's called. Uh, it's important to note that Master UI Goku's guard break ability is not the same as super effective damage. Yes, it is not the same. People still think it is. It is not the same. He does not get the ability to be super effective. He just hits neutral against every single type. Uh, or, you know, he is able to hit type effective if he's up against a tech type opponent but otherwise it's just neutral damage but uh it also affects the entire rotation uh, i don't know if that's something that he took into consideration or not but that could impact the entire team's rotation as far as like outputting more damage so which would actually directly tie into the average attack number um Instead of always inflicting damage as if he has type disadvantage, or a type advantage, excuse me, guard break simply means that he will never inflict damage as if he has a type disadvantage. So if you didn't know, if he were to attack a physical type, he'd do reduced damage. That's just kind of how the game works when it comes to typings. Unfortunately for Master UI Goku, his best teammates don't share his best attack links. That means his attack value is comparatively low, even though he has a solid 150% attack boost. 1.5, so just... Just a little over 200, what, 250? Yeah, 250,000 more damage <clears throat> on the turn uh, average than Turles. So really not that crazy. Like, you know, there is like, it's funny when you look at it, like, you know, he gets 150 and things of that nature, and Turles still is not that far behind this guy. Uh, so that's pretty good in my eyes as far as like, you know, balancing these units. So I enjoy it. I'm just trying to think like, which team he probably put him on, but I'm all but certain he's on his own team. Because that's like the best team for him, in fact. Let's go ahead and pull up this guy. Um, and which categories? Realm of Gods, Universe Survival Saga. Yeah, it doesn't really necessarily matter. He'd be on Realm of Gods or Universe Survival that he'd be factored into. Uh, but I don't... I mean, he'd be he'd be optimal here, you know? So it's... Yeah, he'd be optimal here. I'm just trying to figure out why he would only have it uptime 60% or 16% of the time. It just depends which units he's running him with. Even on this team... You know, Tech Vegito Blue, I don't think he has Godly Power. Uh, he has Warrior Gods, yeah? Warrior Gods, I thought so. So that's another unit that won't have it. Um, this Vegeta has Warrior Gods too, actually. Ouch. So yeah, he's not necessarily going to have... Do you have it? I don't think you have it either. No, you do. You do. Uh, or not. <laughs> Never mind. So yeah, you can see actually here why he's not getting access to it. On his best possible team, I literally just went through three units, not including the, the leader, so three other units that don't have it. So, yeah, it's really hard for him to get it, apparently, on his own category. <clears throat> and then Kamehameha is going to obviously be linked with some sort of other Goku. Number three, SSBE Vegeta, Evolution Vegeta, Accepted Pride, Link's Active, are Super Fierce Battle 100% of the time, Super Saiyan 100% of the time, which is another thing. Him not having Super Saiyan or anything like that, he just doesn't have that many good attack links, to be honest. Like, he's kind of hard to proc his attack links for. He's very independent. Kamehameha, it's, I mean, let's just call it what it is. It's crap. 
Prepare for battle. Great link. Over in a flash, great link as well. Godly power can be really good if used properly, which, I mean, if you look at his team, there's nobody really to have on the team with this. I mean, if you're running Jiren and LR Beerus, fine, right? Otherwise, or SSG Goku, any of them, you know, otherwise it's not very easy to proc. So 15% is cool, but it's not very common. As you saw, Tournament of Powers of 3 Key Link, First Awaken is literally not even usable on his category teams from what I can see. Unless you go out of your way to run an intelligence-type unit, it's not even really usable. I mean, this guy has it, I believe, but that's about it. So this guy's got to be the only other guy that you would even consider running on the team to try to optimize him because <laughs> he's like his best friend for the most part. And then Fierce Battle. So Godly Power, First Awaken, and Fierce Battle. So if he's not linked with SSG, for example, he's not able to output the way that he would want to. And that's actually very unfortunate. And also, I, I believe SSG also had uh, Kamehameha. No, no, that one does not have it. So it's, it's weird the way that this unit just kind of breaks out. He has good attack links. Technically, they're just not very common. Uh, anyways, unless you go out of your way, like I said, to make them common, which I do when I do my showcases. Anyways, 100% uh, to Fierce Battle, Super Saiyan, and 50% for God Warrior, which is Godly Power, or, or Warrior Gods, excuse me. Uh, although he's the pure Saiyan category leader, he performs best on the Realm of Gods team. That's 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 a given. That's obvious. Uh, especially because there's more Super Saiyans, more Warrior Gods on that team, as opposed to on the Tournament of Power team, where there isn't that much of that stuff floating around. Uh... Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta's critical hit chance is hard to estimate. It continually builds up as he attacks, uh, but his transformation only has a small chance to proc late in a fight. Because of that, his average number of crit stacks after transforming is roughly three. So the built-in crit. The built-in crit literally allows this Vegeta to start hitting that hard. 2.1. We broke over 2 million. That's, that's a very sizable increase after Master Ultra Instinct to this Vegeta. Like, a lot of people call him Crab. A lot of people say he's not very good. But the, the issue with this Vegeta uh, lies prior to transforming. You know, post-transforming, he's really good. Prior is where his issues are uh, because he becomes a, so basically a defensive unit. Um, and then, of course, his... I don't really like the the whole, like, 20... 30%, excuse me, chance to transform after four turns. That's not that great. You can get it, or you can go literally the entire event without getting it. It's, it's actually probably the worst condition among all of these guys, to be honest. I'm going to be 100% honest. Because Turles, it's like, yo, 80%, sure. You know, you have a very good chance of it. It's going to most likely happen for you. 50% uh, is hard to do if you have a good team, but it's guaranteed, you know. And then Vegeta's like, oh, well, I can do it without any sort of HP restriction. But there's a low chance, basically. And I've, I've literally done several videos showing off this Vegeta now, and I've gone through where it's like, oh, well, one of them does it or the other one doesn't and things like that. Uh, I was, I was going to put up a uh, Super Battle Road video today, uh, but I saw Talon already put his up, and I had recorded mine last night. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to kind of postpone mine until tomorrow or something like that. Uh, but you'll see it there too, and it's kind of like where you know one's transforming, the other one's not transforming. They're both on the same rotation and stuff. It's, it's pretty wonky. Um, but nonetheless, if you can get it to work, it's great. But he changes entirely to from a defensive unit to an offensive unit. He also gets more attack. So hey, that's where this Vegeta's unit like issues lie. It's prior to transforming. But once he transforms, he becomes really powerful, especially with the uh, additional potential system investment um, where you can start critical hitting on his first hit if you don't have any dupes invested, of course. Well, you, when you do have a dupe invested. Because naturally, he can't do that on the first hit of the first turn post-transforming. He cannot crit on his first hit because he has to accumulate a chance to crit. The second hit, yes. On, onward, after the first hit, he can't do it. Uh, so, I don't know. This guy's really good. A lot of people are saying he's not so good. But, as you see, if we are just taking into consideration the transformations, that's what this is. This isn't taking into consideration just Ultra Instinct Omen Goku prior to transforming into this version of Goku, basically just Ultra Instinct. This isn't taking into consideration Turles, who actually apparently gets worse by transforming. It's just simply as if these were, you know, the final forms of those units and they stayed that way, as if the transformation mechanic didn't exist. <laughs> so that's interesting, man. Crits are so awesome. That, that helps a lot. And also, he only gave him roughly three. So, number two, and I'm sure you guys can guess who number one is since we jumped to number two. Average attack jumps literally over a million. Almost 1.5. Look at this difference, man. 1.3. Okay. 1.5. Okay, that's not that bad. I was saying that earlier. 1.5 up to 2.1. That's actually pretty sizable. 
that's a few hundred off of being a flat million, you know? It's pretty sizable. 400, whatever, 1,000. Um, and then, okay, I'll raise you one. Hold my beer, right? Almost 1.5 up. <laughs> that's crazy. Now, where these two, of course, you know who number one is. Where these two, uh, they have a difference from everyone else is their LRs. And I thought that Bandai was going to continue dropping LRs as, you know, the the new norm, basically. But apparently, they're not going to do that uh, as of right now anyway. But these guys have a huge advantage being LRs because they have access to that LR stat, <laughs> that incredibly high stat. Now, prior to transforming, they are incredibly lackluster. Uh, actually, the funny thing is the physical one is better than the Intelligence Goku and Vegeta, you know, prior to transforming. And it's pretty sizable increase in damage and stuff like that. But... They're incredibly lackluster prior, but post-transforming, they get these new abilities. This one becomes type effective. The other one becomes counter. So, you know, you kind of pick your poison. Super Saiyan and Fierce Battle are active all the time. After transforming, LR Super Gogeta no longer has any key issues. And that's another thing, too, on their optimal teams. Honestly, they don't link super well. They really just don't. If they're not transformed, they really don't link super well because their teams want access to the fusion links, and they just don't have it. You know, uh, and I think this one's in a better position, uh, untransformed than the Int one. I think the Int one struggles a lot more for key, despite the extra key passive that they have. But what happens is, uh, basically, whenever they go ahead and transform, they get an extra key, one more key per rainbow orb. So three key per rainbow orb is actually insane. <laughs> uh, so, and he also shares the fusion link with all the category members. So yeah, he has it all the time. <laughs> so combination of super effective damage lr stats and 150 percent buff makes him an offensive force to be reckoned with 3.5 guys super effective lr stats and 150 and this is why this guy is the hardest hitting uh, lr in the game but whenever i say lrss3 is the hardest hitter in the game i always put the asterisk of not transformed because lrss3 i believe is just behind this gogeta he's up there you know he's the hardest guy that's not transformed but i always put that one you know <laughs> uh so super fierce battle super saiyan and power beyond god 50 percent uptime that's an extra 2k that he gets just from that that's pretty cool after transforming lr super vegeto no longer has any key issues that's because he gets one more key from rainbow orbs and he shares the fusion link with several of his teammates attack is so monstrously high because he combines his 150 percent attack passive with counter attacks that devastating combo makes lr super vegeto post transformation uh, state far and away, I'm going to assume that he says, the best hardest hitter in the game at an average attack of <laughs> Yo, seriously, 5.8? 5.8, uh, 5.79, 5.8 basically. Are you kidding? <laughs> Those counters, bro. And this is why LR Vegito Blue couldn't have counters. This is literally why. This is actually why. This is why. Like, seriously. <laughs> and LR Vegito Blue actually is an incredibly powerful unit. And people are just now realizing it. Uh, I realized it the whole time. A lot of people did. But a lot of people, now that they've got him, like, oh, yeah, he's awesome. But this is why. When that, all that whole stuff was going on, I was like, bro, they're not going to give him that. Because he can't have it. Because he's too powerful if they do. 5.8 versus 3.5. That's self-explanatory. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and leave it there. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe, of course, if you happen to be new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> 5.8, guys.